Today you're going to learn the five proven steps to start selling on Amazon FBA. These five proven steps allowed me to start my Amazon FBA business in 2013 and grow to $31,000 monthly revenue in only three months. By the end of this video, you'll know these five steps so you'll be able to start your Amazon business today. Welcome to e-commerce TV with your host, Jeff Wainwright. If you watch this video to the end, you'll learn how to start your own lifestyle business so you can make the money you deserve, eventually quit your job and be able to spend more time with your family. In fact, I've used these steps to launch hundreds of products. And later in this video, I'm gonna show you how I make a profit on investment of at least 100%. So without further ado, let's get started with step number one. First, we need to understand the FBA process. Next up, it's time to find what I call easy beginner products. Moving right along with this tutorial is finding a supplier to manufacture your product. In step four, we will ship your product to Amazon. And finally, in step five, we optimize your product listing. So customers choose to buy your product instead of the competitors. Step one, you need to understand the process. The way Amazon FBA works is you become a third party seller. I started my Amazon FBA account in 2007 and became an Amazon FBA third party seller in 2013. You can go to amazon.com right now and sign up as a seller. How the process works is you're gonna send products into Amazon's FBA warehouse. Later on in this video, I'm going to show you how to find what I call easy beginner products. Then when someone comes along and finds your product on Amazon.com, they buy it and you get paid by Amazon and then they ship the product to the customer. The great thing about this is you can gradually scale your business and start making five sales a day with your first product. Then you add another product and do 10 sales a day, then another and do 15 sales a day. Amazon makes it easy for you to scale your business because they do all the work of picking your product from the warehouse shelves, packing them into boxes and using their great shipping rates to send your products to customers. Amazon also take care of the customer service. So you don't have to worry about customers making inquiries or wanting returns and chargebacks. I've been able to create a lifestyle business by letting Amazon do all of these things that I just described instead of me having to store all of these products at my house and having to pack all of these things and ship them off. This is why people use the term FBA, which stands for Fulfillment by Amazon. Amazon FBA makes it possible for you to generate passive income and live a laptop lifestyle and do this business from anywhere in the world where you have a, an internet connection. Amazon FBA gives you the freedom to do other things while Amazon warehouses your products and they take care of customer service and fulfillment. I can focus on finding new products, expanding into new countries, taking my wife out on a date, vacationing in other countries, or watching my favorite sport. Amazon FBA gives me time and freedom to do this without having to commute to a nine to five job. Amazon FBA lets you build a lifestyle business with systems that make passive income for you, even while you are sleeping. So in this first step, you need to understand the process and sign up from Amazon account. There are two types of seller account, an individual account and a professional seller's account. The individual account is free. However, you pay 99 cents for each item that you sell. The professional seller's account is 39.99 per month and you don't pay the 99 cent per item fee. So if you sell more than 40 items per month, which you will do if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, then you need the professional seller's account. The benefit of having a professional seller's account is you get to run ads on Amazon. Amazon ads are also known as sponsored products. The professional account also gives you business reports that you can download and examine to figure out what you need to do to tweak your business so you can optimize it for more success and to make more money. The great thing about having an Amazon FBA business is there is no limit. You don't have to ask your boss if you can have a pay rise. You just launch more products and launch them in more countries like the United Kingdom and Europe. Instead of working your butt off to make more money for your boss and someone else's company, 
you can make more money for your own lifestyle business. Step number two, you need to find easy beginner products. The reason I want you to start with easy beginner products is so that you can avoid what are known as Amazon gated products that require permission before you can sell these products on Amazon. I also want you to avoid selling products that require government permits. And later in this video, I'll talk to you about other things to avoid, such as selling breakable items. As a beginner, I want you to stick to selling boring Amazon products that people are buying every day. This product search phase is the foundation of your business and is a perpetual process that you continue doing to keep fueling your business and growing your business. You need to think of yourself as an investor that invests in assets to keep growing your business and your profits. How do we reduce the risk of investing in a failed product? First, we identify suitable research categories for beginners, and later in this video, I'll detail those categories for you. Then we apply my item specifics to avoid, which I'll also explain to you later in this video. Then we analyze each product to make sure it has enough demand, and we record everything in a spreadsheet. Here are the research categories I recommend for beginners. Electronics, accessories and supplies, patio lawn and garden, industrial and scientific, musical instruments, office products, sports and outdoors, computers and accessories, tools and home improvement, camera and photo. When you are starting out, I recommend you only spend time researching these categories. Only after you are more established and have some FBA experience, do I think that you should try the other categories that require Amazon approval or government permits. The categories of baby products and toys and games are a bit trickier. So I recommend you only try them after successfully launching in one of the easier categories first. Now here are a few of the item characteristics that as a beginner, I want you to avoid. Don't start out with any products that require electricity or batteries, are hazardous or contain chemicals, are prohibited items, are fragile, contain lots of moving parts, where the longest side of the product is greater than one meter, any products heavier than 50 pounds, products that are difficult to operate or hard to understand, any products that sell for less than $7, there's not enough profit, products that could be unsafe or dangerous for a customer, and don't sell products involving intellectual property. For example, don't try to sell something from a Disney that has characters on it or listing anything like that where Amazon could shut you down because you're using another company's IP. The reason I don't want beginners selling products with any of these types of characteristics is because they're too risky for a noob. You won't hear many of the Amazon gurus warning you about these types of product risks. As an Amazon investor, you wanna protect your investment and avoid risk by steering away from these types of products. So how do we find low risk products that are in demand? Well, thankfully, Amazon tells us the products that are in demand by giving them a bestseller rank, which is also known as BSR. The BSR is a number that shows how well a product is selling in a category. And Amazon constantly updates this BSR number in real time as sales are made. Think of how professional tennis players are given a world ranking and the BSR products works the same way. The number one selling product in an Amazon category is like a tennis player that keeps winning Grand Slam tournaments. The higher the BSR for a product means it has a lower amount of sales or demand and the lower the BSR means a higher amount of sales or demand. Amazon has a top 100 for each category of products. Here we are in the patio lawn and garden category showing the top 100 products. We avoid these first four products because these two have chemicals and these have electrical characteristics that I want you to avoid. The rubber doormat is a potential product because it has demand and it is an easy category and does not have any of the item characteristics that I just told you to avoid. Now we need to make sure we don't pick a product that has too much competition and avoid saturated markets. How do we determine the amount of competition? We go back to Amazon and type the main keywords into the search bar. 
The way we determine the main keyword is by looking at the title and removing all the words until only the ones remain that make sense. For example, if we remove all the words except for rubber and doormat, we have the primary keywords of rubber doormat. We copy the main keywords and click search. Now on the first page, we can see all of the competition for this rubber doormat product. Your goal is to appear on the first page when someone types in this main keyword into the search bar. The only way you can do that is if some of the sellers are not too strong. If we scroll to the lowest ranking product on the page and look at the BSR, we can see how strong the competition is. We can see the BSR for three of these rubber doormats are over 10,000 BSR. This means we could compete because these products with high BSRs greater than 10,000 are still making five sales per day and they're on page one. So we could get on the first page for this rubber doormat. If you see products on the first page with high BSR numbers of 5,000, 10,000 and higher, you know the competition is not too strong and you can compete with that and make the first page with your product. This is the basic way to measure potential competition. And there's a lot more that goes into a good research strategy. So you really should subscribe to this channel if you wanna keep learning in more detail about Amazon FBA. Once you have determined that a product is in demand but not too competitive and you have a chance to show up on the first page of search results, then we move to step three. Step three is finding a supplier to manufacture your products to be more valuable than the competitor's products. As a beginner, the easiest way to do this is to go to alibaba.com. Alibaba is a business networking platform for manufacturers, suppliers, and trading companies. Alibaba lets you connect with and negotiate with suppliers who can manufacture your product. How do you reduce risk and make sure a supplier is trustworthy? Click on the three buttons at the top, Trade Assurance, Gold Supplier, and Assess Supplier. This filters out any suppliers that I wouldn't trust. Now you have all the gold suppliers that have paid a few thousand dollars to Alibaba and scammers won't normally do this. They are also the trade assurance suppliers, which means when you pay your money to purchase your products, it is held in a third party escrow account and only released when you are satisfied with the quality of the products. Thirdly, assessed suppliers are companies that have had a site visit to inspect they actually have a legitimate business address and are a genuine factory or trading company. Now when we look at product selection, we need to ask a number of these suppliers to send us information about cost, weight and dimensions and enter this information into a spreadsheet to see if we can make enough profit to proceed with an order. To contact the supplier, we click here and start typing a message. You will contact multiple suppliers because we want to compare prices and ultimately we want to order samples and compare the quality of each supplier. You will contact multiple suppliers because ultimately we want to compare samples and then we want to choose the best supplier. Then we add all the details into a spreadsheet and if the profit is not at least 100% on investment, then we do not order any samples from that supplier and we keep looking for another product or supplier until we get the profit of 100%. This means if we invest $6 in a product in China and send it to Amazon and sell it for $20, we want to make at least $6 net profit to make 100% profit on investment. When we communicate with our suppliers, we want to tell them that we want a much more valuable product than the current ones that are being sold on page one of Amazon. We need to go into each of the Amazon listings and read the product reviews to find out what people like and don't like and we build our product according to what customers like and avoid or fix the issues that customers say they don't like. When we communicate with our suppliers on Alibaba, we want to include a bonus product inside the packaging if possible. Or we might increase the size or quantity of our product to make it more valuable so that customers will choose us over the competition. Most sellers will just sell the same basic product as each other and won't make the effort to differentiate themselves and make their product more valuable. When you differentiate and add value to your product, people have a better reason to buy from you rather than the competition. Now in step four, we ship the product to Amazon and start making money. We negotiate a low minimum order quantity or MOQ and we send the supplier a purchase order spelling out exactly what we want them to manufacture for us, including the material and colors, etc. We use Alibaba Trade Assurance when we pay the supplier to protect our investment 
and attach the purchase order and any purchase invoice the supplier gives us. This is proof of what we agreed in the order. And if the supplier doesn't deliver what we agreed, then we can get our money back from Alibaba. We contact some freight forwarders and get some quotes based on the weights and dimensions our supplier gave us. We then select the freight forwarder who gives us the best quote. We then give the freight forwarder the details to contact our supplier so they can ship our products from China to Amazon's FBA warehouse. Now in step five, we already have our products in Amazon warehouse. So now we need to optimize our product listings for high conversions. So how do we optimize for high conversions? There are four important areas, title, pictures, bullets, and description. The product title is incredibly important because if the title does not interest them, they will scroll past your offer. The best product title includes the keyword of the product that the customer wants to buy. The title should have a maximum length of 250 characters. The product formula we use for product title is brand name, color, pack size, primary keyword, secondary keyword, plus size and materials. Here's an example of the product title formula using the rubber doormat we've been looking at. The brand name is Gorilla Grip, the color is Black Maze, there is no pack size so we can leave it out as there's no only one item for sale. The primary keyword is rubber doormat, the secondary keyword is heavy duty doormat, but we don't need to repeat doormat because it is already part of the primary keyword. The size and material is 29 by 17 inch and waterproof is the material. Now let's look at product images. We need incredibly high quality photos if you want conversions when customers visit your product listing. Amazon claims sales will increase by 33% if you have outstanding product images. Customers need to be able to feel like they can touch your product with great images. You should show how the product works with lifestyle images of the product in action. We also need to include pictures of our bonus product all laid out nicely. Here's an example of great quality zoomable product images. After a customer looks at your images, you will need bullet points that boost product sales. People will just scan your bullets, so we don't want to stuff too many words here. Good product bullet points create interest and differentiate your product and should be easy to read. These bullets are too long and could be shortened to make them easier for the customer to read. Focus on giving your customer enough information to buy your product. You can have a look at what competitors are saying in their bullet points to get a feel for what you should say in your bullet points. Finally, we have the product description which outlines the benefits of our product. Not everyone will scroll down the page, but for those who do, we will make our product description sell the benefits of the product. We use the AIDA formula to create a great product description. The AIDA formula stands for Awareness, Interest, Desire, Action. In future videos, I'll teach you the AIDA formula in more detail. If you learnt something new from this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Click on the subscribe button now. If you want to learn more about selling on Amazon, then visit intelligentsalesmachine.com. If you want to join our family in the Facebook group, click the link in the description. What step from this tutorial do you need more help with? Leave a comment below to let me know right now.